this uh, specific uh, workshop um, to a person which uh, unfortunately uh, died uh, and uh, we all loved him and, and cherish him and, and we would like to share with you a little bit uh, his, uh, his bio and I'm referring to Professor Elj Prinzak. Uh, Elj Prinzak was an Israeli counterterrorism um, specialist that was uh, his expertise was the extreme right in Israel. I think he was uh, known as the most knowledgeable scholar in Israel uh, on that matter and others as well. Uh, he was a senior lecturer, lecturer uh, of political science at the Hebrew University where his research focused on terrorism and religious radicalism. He had been the academic uh, director of the Raoul Wallenberg um, scholarship program after his uh, fellowship at the Institute of Peace, Sprintzak uh, founded and was the dean of the Lauder School of Government um, Diplomacy <coughs> and Strategy here at the Interdisciplinary Center. This uh, conference is being run by uh, the School of Government. I'm, I have the honor to be the deputy dean and um, the one who was founding this, uh, this uh, school is Professor Elch Sprintzak and we try as much as we can to follow his uh, lead, his vision, and his concepts. Uh, professor Helge Prinzak uh, had been a visiting professor in the Department of Government in Georgetown University and the School of International Service at the American University. He was the 1995 recipient of the Gdal Gdalia Gal Fellowship from Association uh, of the Commemoration of Israel's Intelligence Community, and he was selected as the 1992 uh, uh, Baruch uh, Yekutieli Fellow of the Jerusalem Institute for the Study of Israel. In 1992, uh, Professor Sprintzak was awarded the uh, Landau Prize uh, for the best political science book uh, for the ascendances of Israel radical right. He was one of the few experts on Israel ultra right, and he was the one of the few experts that actually told the former Israeli Prime Minister. Uh, um, Prime Minister Rabin uh, that uh, he might face an assassination attempt and I was at that time discussing these matters with, uh, with Professor Sprintzak and he was, uh, it the picture was so clear to him uh, unfortunately uh, uh, the Prime Minister uh, didn't uh, take his advice on that matter uh, he also wrote Brothers Against Brothers Violence, extremism in uh, Israeli uh, politics, from Altelena uh, to the Rabin assassination, and he was the co-editor of the Israeli Democracy Under Stress. Elch Prinzak received his uh, doctorate in political science from Yale University. He died in November 2002 at the age of 62, and he, he survived by his wife, Ricky, who is sitting uh, with us here today, four children, and it, it's written to me two grandchildren. It's, it's three now. So we, we wish that there will be many more. Um, on a personal note, uh, Professor Sprintzak was my teacher. Uh, he was my tutor in my PhD. And he was, uh, he was a real friend of mine. And um, he actually uh, educated, I would say, a generation of scholars in Israel which I'm proud to be uh, one of them. And uh, if I can speak for all of them, I definitely can speak for myself. We are missing him on a daily basis. So we decided to uh, commemorate him in this uh, memorial uh, workshop. Thank you, Michai. Thank you, Boaz. Uh, uh, turning uh, sharply to the issues uh, uh, before us, uh, what I'd like to, to do um, as much for our collective discussion uh, as for the, uh, for the panelists um, is um, uh, to lay out uh, four, four questions just as a, as a context and a background for our, for our conversation this morning. The first question that I think we, we need to address, uh, we tend to take the answer uh, for granted that there is this kind of democratic deficit in the, some would say, the Arab world, the Muslim world. There's a, there's a debate uh, there, but I want to provide some figures and, 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 and 
ask this question soberly, how uh, much of a democratic deficit uh, does there exist in the, in the Middle East and in North Africa in comparison to other parts of the world? I think uh, we are going to talk about the relationship between uh, radicalization, extremism, tyranny, uh, democracy. We really need to, to have an empirical idea of the degree uh, to which uh, uh, the Middle East is, is exceptional uh, in its lack, of, uh, its lack of democracy. So that's the first thing I'd like to get out of the way. The second uh, question that I think all of us need to address is, well, is there a tyranny terror link, right? What is the relationship between lack of democracy, lack of political uh, freedom, some would say economic freedom, um, and, um, and terrorism? Um, the truth is that the literature on this is surprisingly uh, scant. Uh, to my mind, it's, it's fairly unsatisfactory. As I was preparing for this workshop, I sort of reviewed um, to the best of my knowledge the available literature on this and the fact is that the answers are fairly ambiguous and I, I'd like to put the literature before you uh, so that we can have an informed conversation about, about this. Um, the third <coughs> issue I think that we need to address uh, is well where does democracy promotion stand in, in American foreign policy? Uh, is it a recent phenomena? Is it an old phenomena? Uh, do Americans take democracy promotion seriously? Uh, do they only take it seriously on, at the rhetorical level? I was just uh, speaking to Boaz before we got started. I received uh, figures uh, from uh, the Democracy Digest. This is a, uh, a weekly uh, publication by the National Endowment for Democracy in the United States, which show that today Americans are more skeptical about international intervention and certainly about democracy promotion than they were probably at any time since 1947, since the end of the, of the Second World War, which, which is revealing in itself. So where does democracy promotion fit in, in American foreign uh, interests uh, on the whole? Now, I'd like to uh, make some suggestions about that, uh, maybe some controversial, controversial suggestions about that. Um, and then finally, just to uh, be really provocative, I'd like to lay out seven possible hypotheses, seven possible relationships about the relationship between democracy promotion and the curbing of, of, of terrorism, which is really at the heart of, of our discussion uh, today. So if you'll permit me, I'll just go through these four questions relatively quickly. Hopefully that would provide us with the um, empirical, sort of uh, theoretical background um, to, to, today's, uh, to today's workshop. Okay, so let's begin with the first question. Is there a democratic deficit in, in, the, in the Middle East? Let's take a step back and see what has happened to democracy globally over the past uh, 30, 35, 35 years. For those people who are interested in this, Samuel Huntington famously wrote a book called The Third Wave, right? The Third Wave of Global Democratization. And what you have here before you, since this is a counterterrorism uh, conference, I can use uh, little, laser, little laser dots. If you don't behave, I'm going to put them on your, on, your, on your forehead as well, as I do with my students. But if you, can, if you, if you see... Uh, if we look at 1989, right, the, the, um, uh, the fall of the, uh, of the Berlin Wall, I mean, Samuel Huntington goes back all the way to 1974. It makes the case that in 1974 there were only 39 democracies on the, on the face of the planet. Today, as you can see, we have about 120, 123 uh, uh, democracies. 1974, only 27% of the countries around the world where democracies today, this is slightly out of date, the figures for 2011, 2012 will show you a slight up here, uh, a slight increase in the number of electoral democracies around the world. Somewhere between 62 and 64 percent of the countries in the world today are electoral democracies. Not all of them are consolidated liberal democracies, but they're all electoral, electoral democracies. So globally, we have experienced an unprecedented democratic revolution over the last 35 years. From a situation where democracies were very much in the minority, and not only were they in the minority, but they were all concentrated in Western Europe, North America, and some of the former colonies of the British Empire, right? Including the State of Israel, India, Australia, New Zealand, Canada. They were all sort of bunched up together. Uh, from this situation, um, over the last 35 years, and in particularly in the aftermath of the, of the Cold War, we have experienced a global democratic revolution. 
If we look at the figures for 2010, and here what you, what you see is the percentage of countries at, at different regions of the world that are uh, democracies. In the, in the blue column you see uh, electoral democracy, and then in the uh, Kermit the Frog green you see uh, liberal democracies. You see that the Anglo-Saxon world is today 100% democratic, and it's 100% uh, composed of liberal democracies, as it has been fairly consistently since the, since the 1970s. Okay? When we look at Latin America, uh, an extraordinary transformation in the 1970s and 80s, today only Venezuela and Cuba do not count as, uh, as, as democracies, but you see that there's a, a larger gap between the consolidated liberal democracies and the, and, and the number of electoral democracies. Right? Uh, this is what we call a hybrid regime. Uh, countries that have free and fair elections, but at the same time suffer from serious problems of corruption, uh, presidentialism, and so on and so forth. So not all, all countries that we count as democracies are consolidated liberal democracies. Asia, uh, the Pacific Islands, incredibly, even sub-Saharan Africa, right? For those people who claim that poverty and democracy can never go together, almost 50% of, of states in sub-Saharan Africa today are electoral democracies. Some of them are actually uh, doing extremely well. Uh, Namibia, uh, uh, Botswana, uh, South Africa has, has its problems over, uh, certainly over the last uh, year or two, but relatively doing extremely well. And, he, and then we come to the Middle East. Two electoral democracies, you can guess which ones they are. It's Turkey and Israel, and a single liberal democracy out of a group of maybe 30 states, that is the state of Israel. 